Well, hi there. I want to welcome you to the Presbyterian Church of Marion in Marion Center, Pennsylvania, our YouTube worship playlist for November 29th, which is the first Sunday in a liturgical season we call Advent. I'm Pastor Chris Enoch, and I am glad you are with us today. And I'm sitting here in an empty and somewhat darkened sanctuary. I don't have many of the lights on. And I'm sitting here for a couple of reasons. First of all, last weekend I injured my leg and my foot, my, my good foot, while working out in the yard. And standing up for any extended period of time right at the moment would feel less than optimal, which is a good way to describe the year 2020 less than optimal. I know many of us are coming off of a Thanksgiving holiday in which we celebrated the holiday either alone or with very, very small family units. And as we look forward, we don't know how Advent or Christmas is going to play out. But this, I think I can guarantee it's going to be less than optimal. But I also can't help but feel that the darkness of these days it's a little bit similar to the darkness that the prophet Isaiah was feeling when he received the words from the Lord that we'll be exploring over the next four and a half weeks. It was not a good feeling. It was less than optimal for Isaiah, for the people he ministered to. And as we start Advent, we're going to keep thinking that way a little bit. Now, I want to get a few things going. I want to read a note that is more than a note. It's kind of a letter that I wrote to the congregation earlier in the week. And I wrote this. Dear friends, the session of the Presbyterian Church of Marion met after worship last Sunday. It's November 22nd to discuss the ongoing and certainly the challenging situation with the COVID-19 illness that is going around in our area right now. We are pleased with how the congregation has responded to the pandemic, especially as it comes to our in-person worship services. So the session has chosen to try to keep the church building open in a limited way, and that will include worship services. We will have to monitor things week by week, and needless to say, I need to prompt all of us to keep being diligent. As I said last Sunday's sermon, all of us need to do what is best to protect ourselves and to protect others. With the plan to continue in-person worship, I do want to remind us of the guidelines that session adopted last June and realize maybe we were letting it slip a little bit. First of all, in worship, masks are recommended. I would say highly recommended. We are not going to do any singing. I would urge that we take advantage of the ample locations of hand sanitizer that we have here in the church. Social distancing is a necessity and also will be the lack of congregating before and after worship. We'll continue what we've been doing. No passing of the peace, no fellowship time, no, no passing of offering plates. We have been observing the Lord's Supper and we're using pre-packaged elements. For several reasons, worship is going to remain shorter. Our bathrooms will be open, but we will encourage you to use your facilities at home. Very few other uses of the church building will be allowed. So what I'm about to say is really, really important. If you are in any way high risk, feel free to stay home for your own well-being. This is important. As a matter of fact, if in any way you are uncomfortable with attending worship in our building, please know that you are welcome to do or not do as you feel led. Again, I have an important point to make. If you are ill in any way, or if you have in likelihood been exposed to the COVID-19 virus, please stay home. We'll see you when you feel better. We'll see you when your quarantine is over. For those who stay home and you have internet access, I do plan to continue to try to offer these online worship opportunities. They have been viewed by many. As I said earlier, we will be monitoring the situation week by week. 
as I sit here in the quiet, in the emptiness, in the darkness of the late afternoon in this sanctuary, I know how difficult a time this has been for all of us. And for some of you, it's been far more difficult than it possibly has been for me, more than I can possibly imagine. And I'm sure you have, as I have, spent far more time praying than usual. And I want to urge you to continue to do that. As it states out in the church signs we have out here in the community, worry less, pray more. May we continue to be praying for this pandemic to end. May we be used by God to help out where we can. And certainly, let's be praying for those around us who are sick. But also, I want to encourage you to to stop, take a moment, and just give thanks to the Lord for all that he has done for us and will continue to do. God is good, and he is good all the time. One more announcement before we get started. We will be having communion next week, and so I would encourage you to spend some time again in prayer reflecting on your relationship with Jesus and with his people. If you'll be taking communion at home, and you are welcome to do that by following along in the video, I invite you to look through your kitchen and find your bread and beverage. Like I said in the past, there's great symbolism in the elements that we traditionally use to celebrate the Lord's Supper. The church also has a long history of using the most fitting materials that are readily available in any given circumstance. So feel free to be creative and use what you have in mind. So this is Advent, and we are going to start lighting Advent candles. If you do have an Advent set at home, you might want to stop the video and get it out and light the first candle as we follow through a liturgy that you will see on the screen. As we light the first candle of Advent, look at Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the bringer of hope. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. As we light the first candle of Advent, look at Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the bringer of hope. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. As we light the first candle of Advent, look at Jesus, the wonderful counselor, the bringer of hope. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. My friends, let us worship Jesus, the wonderful counselor. Mm 